For an exceptionally silent and functional PC build, the Be Quiet Pure Base 600 ATX tower is what you're looking for. It's completely sound insulated with dampening materials in all the relevant places, features a modular design with removable ODD and hard drive base for various cooling solutions, and it comes pre-installed with two Pure Wings 2 fans. One of the things I love about this case is the cable management area. There are plenty of pass-throughs and grommets to help with cable management, something I don't often see in most cases. The Pure Base 600 comes with a 3-year warranty and it's available in black and silver accents. If you want to learn more, check out the first link down below. So Intel's 7th gen CPUs are finally here and I'm kind of late to the party and that's because I couldn't get my hands on them, but Intel was kind enough to send me a few units a few weeks back. So in this video we're going to be comparing the i5-7600K against the i7-7700K on both stock and overclocked frequencies. Also guys, in a separate video, I'm going to be comparing the G4560 against the i3-7350K since both of them are dual core processors. Uh, but yeah, with that said and done, let's dive right into the video. So before I even get into the benchmarks, let's take a look at the new Z270 platform and what it offers compared to the last generation Z170 Skylake platform. For starters, it provides an additional 4 PCI lanes, which may not seem much, but it can definitely aid builders that want to use multiple M.2 slots, since sometimes these are disabled depending on which PCI slot you occupy on the motherboard. The other difference is that the Z270 boards will now support Intel's Optane technology. The Optane drive that connects via PCI instead of SATA will have improved file access times, which means faster transfer speeds and boot up times. So the 7600K will cost you $240 and it's an unlocked quad-core CPU with a base frequency of 3.8 GHz while the 7700K will cost you $350. This too is a quad-core CPU but with a higher base clock coming in at 4.2 GHz. The testbed I'm using features the new Aura Z270 Gaming 9 motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM from Crucial, an EVGA GTX 1080 for the win to ensure that there is no GPU bottlenecking, and finally the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3 air cooler. I did manage to push both CPUs to 5 GHz even. The 7600K with a core voltage of 1.38 and 1.275 on the 7700K. On idle, both processors are fairly cool, hovering around 30 degrees Celsius even when overclocked. However, I did notice that the 7700K got pretty hot while rendering. It reached temps of 73 degrees while the 7600K stayed in the low 60s. Rendering out a 60 second 4K file in handbrake using the H.264 codec took about 2 minutes and 12 seconds on the 7600K, while it took a minute and 38 on the 7700K, which is about 25% faster. However, when overclocked, the gap increases. There's almost a 40% difference in render speeds. Render times on Sony Vegas, however, don't have a large gap compared to handbrake. The same file took 3 minutes and 57 seconds on the 7700, while it took 4 minutes and 35 on the 7600. That's only a 14% difference in speed for stock and only 9% when overclocked. So we can see that the gap gets smaller after we overclock both CPUs. Obviously these numbers strongly depend on the length of the video being rendered, as well as the editing software you are using. The point of these benchmarks is to show you guys the difference in render times between these two CPUs. Now let's take a look at gaming benchmarks. Starting off, we have GTA 5 in high settings. There seems to be a 34 frame difference between the two on stock frequencies. That's a 25% FPS increase if you go with the 7700K. However, if you take a look at the overclocked benchmarks, we can see that the gap narrows down to only a 14% difference. Next up is Metro Last Light, the 7600K showing a 9 FPS spike after overclocked, while the 7700K only received a 4 FPS bump. Still, there's around a 20% difference in FPS between the two, overclocked or not. Ashes of the Singularity is the third game I tested, and it's no surprise that the 7700K once again showing a noticeable lead in frames. It's proving to be the obvious choice when it comes to the best performance, but we're going to be taking a look at the performance per dollar at the end of this episode to see how much bang we are actually getting out of these CPUs. Not a huge difference on Hitman for the overclocked scores, but once again, a 10 FPS lead from the 7700K on the stock frequency. And finally, we got Tomb Raider. However, the benchmarks kind of made no sense to me. It appears that the overclocked scores were lower than the stock frequencies for some reason. But the game is GPU heavy, which makes sense that the scores were very similar. Taking a look at the performance per dollar, we can see that the 7600K will give you the most bang for your buck. 
0.42 frames per dollar, while the 7700K offers only 0.34. And the same goes for the overclocked results as well. The decision is very simple here. If you want the most performance out of the two and you edit lots of videos, then the 7700K is for you. However, if you're on a budget and you want the best bang for your buck CPU and gaming is what you use your PC for mainly, then the 7600K is the ideal choice, especially if you overclock it. But anyways, I'll drop a link to both of the CPUs down below if you guys want to check them out. A huge thanks to Intel for sending these in for review. And if you guys want to see a build using one of these processors, let me know by dropping a like on the video and let me know which processor I should use in a build by leaving your comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.